Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. Language identification is a common task in many natural language processing workflows. We need to figure out which language a piece of text is uh, written in so that we can then translate it to another language or apply some language specific models for entity extraction or other tasks. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to train a language ID model we're going to start from a data set containing text in 102 languages and we're going to fine tune uh, a new model that was just released a week ago and we're going to get really really good results as you will see uh, then of course once we have a model we'll build a hugging face space to showcase it and i will also add uh, optimum intel and open vino for good measure and uh, we'll see how easy it is to use those tools to reduce the prediction latency of the model. And again, we'll look at some numbers. Okay, so lots of stuff to cover today. Uh, let's get started. Obviously, we need a model to get started, and this is the one we're going to use. So it's a Facebook model, and this one is called XLM VBase. And it's actually a variant of the well-known XLM Roberta model. Um, the main difference here is that this XLMV model uh, has been trained on a really, really large vocabulary. I think they mentioned a 1 million token vocabulary on quite a few languages, probably 100 languages at least. So this looks like a good starting point because we, if we have such a large vocabulary and a model pre-trained on different languages, then we should easily be able to perform language ID on many languages, right? So reading this, you know, I thought, hey, yeah, this looks like a good candidate. Uh, why don't we give it a shot? So the next step is to go and grab a data set. And I went for this one. It's a Google data set called Fleur. It's actually um, a speech to text data set. As you can see, it has a, a ton of uh, audio clips and of course it also has the translation for this and so we have 102 uh, languages in there we actually have the list below so uh you know western europe eastern europe and then of course asia africa uh, china korea lots of uh, lots of languages in there some of which honestly i have never ever heard about so that's gonna be interesting and so we have uh we have audio which we're not going to use in this example but we also have the transcriptions and of course we have the language code okay so that's the data set we're going to start from so uh, let's switch to our code and look at how we're going to do this and as usual you know i like to keep things simple i'm going to stick to the trainer api which is really all we need here um, no, uh, no need to go deep into into PyTorch or anything. Uh, so here's the here's the code. So import a whole bunch of objects. Define the data set, the model we want to use. We'll go for an accuracy metric, okay. And as I mentioned before, uh, there are lots of columns in this data set that we're gonna drop. Uh, we're really only going to keep uh, the transcription, so the text and the language ID, which is a, an integer value that we can use as a label. And fortunately, they start at zero and they're continuous. So we don't have to uh, renumber those uh, those labels, right? If you wanna work with a subset of those languages, that's fine. You could stick to, I don't know, 20 languages, but keep in mind, you will have to renumber the, the labels, right? So no such thing here. Uh, we're gonna download all of it. It's actually very big because it's audio. So it's about 390 gigabytes or something. So it takes a while. Make sure you have lots of storage space. Uh, and once this is done, uh, we're gonna build the, lang the label to ID and ID to label mappings. Okay, and uh, well, the simple way to do this, I think, is just to look at every sample in uh the validation set and just build those two dictionaries right so find a language name and uh and an id and just create those dictionaries right 
and I'm sorting them just in case I want to print them out. Uh, I think it's easier if, uh, if they're sorted by ID or by label. Okay, not strictly necessary, just for convenience. Okay. Then we drop all the columns we don't need. We're left with the transcription, which we rename to text, and the lang ID column, which we rename to label. Okay. I'm shuffling the data sets with the seed so that I can actually reproduce this training every every time I need to. Then the tokenizer, which we use uh, to pre-process the data sets. Okay. And that's about it. Okay, so at this point we have our training set, our validation set. Um, we have the original text and labels, and of course we have the the tokens and the attention mask, okay, which the model needs. And then the rest is really um, you know vanilla transformers. So in this case, we want a model for sequence classification. Uh, we pass the, the name of the model, the number of labels, so 102 in this case the two uh, label and ID dictionaries, okay? And we ignore mismatch, mismatch sizes because obviously the classification layer for this model is, uh, is not 102, so it's gonna complain if I don't do that. Um, and yeah, the training arguments, the usual stuff, learning rate, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll evaluate after each epoch and we'll push the result to the hub keeping only the best model. I'm going for five epochs. Um, you know, I thought that'd be a decent number. And we use FP16 uh, for fine tuning to speed things up, okay? And finally, we evaluate the model uh, and, and that's it, right? On, the, on that metric, put everything together and train. Obviously, this is going to run for hours. Uh, I'm using um, I'm using um, a large AWS instance here. I'm actually using a P3DN24XL, which has uh, eight uh, V100 GPUs. Okay, so let's just fire up the training job here, so that we get a sense of how long it takes. And yeah, obviously, we're not going to wait because I waited long enough already. Okay, downloading the data set in itself was uh, quite a story. Okay, all right, yeah, so we have 271,000 samples, and we have about 34,000 samples for validation, okay? So that's reasonably big. And let's see how long this takes. No, it took about four or five hours, I think. Yeah, so it's gonna say 13, but let's let's wait for a few seconds. Yeah, so if you're you you're looking at I think about five hours of training for for five epochs. It's about an hour per epoch if uh, if uh, if you need a, an estimate. Yeah, so so that's what it does. Okay, yeah, a little less than five. All right, so we're obviously not gonna wait. And so once that training is complete, the model has been pushed to uh, the Hugging Face Hub, right? Uh, and so we can take a look at this, right? So this is my model page. I did uh, add some information on it. And uh, yeah, we get, after five epochs, a really, really cool accuracy of 99 Point three percent, which you know, which I think is good. Um, the you know the sentences in the data set are not so long, as we can see here. A lot of them are you know 10, 20 words. The audio clips, a lot of the clips are between let's say around fifteen seconds. Okay, so about fifteen words. Okay, so it's pretty uh, it's pretty good results. And of course we can see. Um, the information pushed to the model card, right? So, uh, yeah, 99.3 percent. No, I have a feeling I could probably have squeezed a little more training, maybe up to 10 epochs, but yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot. But maybe we can get a little more performance here, okay? 
And uh, I include some examples. Uh, we have the evaluation result, all the cool stuff that's automatically created on the model page when you use push to hub. So you should absolutely do that, okay? Um, and we could test the model here, but of course I did create a space. So let's look at the space. So let's take a look at the code. It's quite simple. Um, so the, the flow is very simple. Enter some texts in any of those 102 languages and get the results. Um, to make things more interesting, I added Optimum Intel and OpenVINO to the mix to optimize latency. And we get to pick which uh, model do we want to predict with, the vanilla model or the uh, optimized model, right? So it's all very simple. I just create the vanilla pipeline with the, um, uh, with the pipeline object from the Transformers library, right? Um, I load the same model using the um, Optimum Intel uh, OpenVINO API, right? So uh, that will automatically convert the model to OpenVINO representation. And then, of course, I can create an OpenVINO pipeline. Okay, so now I've got those two pipelines. I'm going to warm up the OpenVINO pipeline to make sure I get uh, great performance immediately. Okay. And then the uh, user interface, very simple, enter some text, decide if we want the vanilla or the OpenVINO model, call the process function, select the appropriate pipeline based on the model selection, uh, time the prediction, and return the scores and the prediction latency, prediction time. Okay, And uh, I have two outputs to, to, to uh, show that, uh, that stuff. Okay, and of course we have some examples. So you can see this is super simple. Uh, applying OpenVINO is, is, you know, is that simple. You just need to make sure, of course, you install it in your requirements. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so now let's look at our uh, space. And we have some examples here. And I already forgot which uh, language this is, so let's give it a shot. Okay, so this first example is Swahili, okay? And we can see the, uh, the confidence level here is extremely high. So obviously it's not 100% that, uh, that widget here is rounding uh, floating point values to integers, but it's, uh, you know, it's very, very high. Uh, we could print out the, the actual values if we wanted, but this really tells us, you know, yes, no doubt it is uh, Swahili, okay? And we see this is predicted in 40 milliseconds or something. So, and if we try the vanilla model, um, we are about three times slower, right? So you can see OpenVINO, uh, really this, just this one line of code here, right? Just doing this is going to speed up inference by a factor of three in this case. So, you know, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, and I'm, I am running on, on CPU here. Uh, CPU upgrade means uh, eight vCPU. So it's, you know, I guess even still, uh, it's, a, it's a reasonably small um, uh, machine here I'm using. You would get even better performance on larger CPU machines. Okay. All right, let's quickly try the other ones. Uh, this one is uh, Filipino or Tagalog. Uh, 48 milliseconds. And about, yeah less than 3x that with the vanilla model this is check okay 36 milliseconds again three times slower here and this one is wolof which is an african language i never knew about and yeah 55 and if we submit it again about yeah three 179 yeah which is more than 3x Okay, and of course, this is all dependent on sequence length, right? So if I just went for this, you know, shorter sequence, I would see, you know, faster prediction. So 88 for the vanilla model and 28 for the, the optimized model. So these are really good times, um, especially since I am not using a super powerful uh, instance here. I am really just using eight vCPUs, right? So there you go. Um, I think this is an interesting example. It shows um, you can really, uh, if you you know, if you pick 
the right model and the right data set um you know that match your use case you can very easily get amazing performance 99 plus percent is just uh you know unexpected i i really didn't fit thought i didn't think i would get that kind of performance here uh the training code is very generic there's nothing complicated you've seen this a million times as always building a space is very simple right and if you add optimum intel uh, and open vino in here uh, you can just accelerate the model 3x doing nothing right just loading it with the open vino object which i find amazing all right but that's just me okay well that's really what i wanted to show you today just how you, how quickly how simply you can build uh, you know state of the art uh, model and uh, deploy it and make it fast right um, this only took you know a couple of hours so uh, you can certainly uh, do it much faster okay all right well that's it for today i hope this was fun and uh, i'll see you next time with more content and until then keep rocking